Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and I was just thinking, you know, I really haven't done a video here out at the greenhouse in quite a while. We've done a lot with the landscaping starting last fall and into the winter. So I think I want to go ahead and show you what we've done here, show you the young gardens. These aren't a mature garden, um, but definitely something that uh, will show you what a garden looks like in the early stages. So this past fall, this area here was totally transformed. Um, this used to be a green grassy field with quite mature flower beds here right up against the parking lot. Uh, but as you can see, we've had a little growth this year. And basically what you're seeing is on the other side of that fence is our outdoor garden center area. Uh, that's where we sell our perennials. Uh, and then just beyond that, there's a bunch of greenhouses that were put up. So that grassy field has gotten smaller um, but we're using the space just differently this year. So let's take a look here at the garden beds. So these were ripped out totally. Everything was removed from this, this area. We kind of worked the soil a little bit and then replanted this area. So things are very small, but I wanted to show you just what they look like here, starting off with a very uh, immature garden. And then as we watch videos throughout the summer and then in you know, years to come, we'll see how this area has really transformed and filled out and grown. So to start with, we were trying to be pretty um, strategic with the plants that we were using in here, wanting to kind of get color in all seasons. Uh, so in the corner there, there's a couple of columbine that are blooming, the red and the pink. That's uh, songbird cardinal and songbird blue jay. And those we only planted about a couple weeks ago, so they're definitely not very mature and not a lot of blooms on them this year but next year as those things drop their seeds i could see that whole corner being really just a solid patch of red and a blue columbine we also planted uh this is let's go in for a closer look here at it this is a zuzu this is an ornamental cherry and this is something that's new something i've really never seen before i have seen it bloom in the greenhouse and the blooms are really pretty. So I wanted to get it out in the landscape so that we could actually see what it does out in the landscape. So this is another spring bloomer. I'm not sure if it'll bloom this spring or not. We'll see because I, it's only been in the ground for about six months. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of color. Uh, behind that, you see some red flowers. That's the lupine. And those were also just planted a few weeks ago when we planted the columbine. Uh, so they, they'll have a nice full mounding habit with those flower spikes. And those will look really pretty as they mature. We'll step back a little bit and we have some phlox blooming. So phlox is always a great spring additive for color. Uh, this is a form of creeping phlox. Let's take a look. I see the tag. Let's see which one this is. It's a Proven Winners and it is the Spring Bling Pink Sparkles. So quite large flowers for a creeping phlox. And I also like too how as the flowers are aging, you get kind of that bicolor bloom going on. So it looks like, you know, as they come out, they're a darker pink, they kind of fade. And then as the flowers are kind of almost to the end, they're almost a white. So that looks really pretty, how you can kind of see that two-tone color. In this area, we're also gonna be placing three aqua pots once it's warm enough to leave them outside. And that's what those little square bricks are. Those are the placeholders for the, where the aqua pots will be going. We had a bunch of the opening act flocks that we dug up and divided and we kind of split it all out here. So this here will be a mass of flocks in midsummer. And these here are the opening act blush, which is a light pink color. These are planted about 12 to 18 inches apart, but this area will definitely, as these mature, become a mass of flocks. In the back there, we had um, a couple Bartzilla peonies. These are the intersectional peonies. And this was something that we wanted to save and keep in this garden because as you can see, that's a very mature plant. And it's such a, I don't know, everybody talks about it when it blooms with these huge yellow flowers. And we didn't want to start small. So we saved the old one and put it in here. Um, there's a lot of buds kind of nestled in here. So this is usually June that this will start blooming. So we're excited to watch as Bartzilla matures and blooms here shortly. Along this area, we have, I'm gonna to try to kind of tell by the foliage that's coming up. We've got some coneflower on either side here. There's a grouping of three. 
a grouping of two, so one must have died off. So we'll have to plant another one in there so it's kind of symmetrical. And then in the middle of that, we planted a bloomering dwarf pink lilac. And you can see that's very small. That was planted from a court last year. So, and when we did this, it was like November, which is a little bit late for us to be planting here in Michigan, but the weather was nice. So we thought, you know what, let's just get it done because that way it's got all, so, uh, all winter to acclimate. Some things might die out. We understood that, but it was worth getting them in just so that we could be ahead of the game here this spring. So that bloomering dwarf pink may have to get replaced because it doesn't look like it liked the winter so well, but we'll see. It's definitely still green and there's a lot of green coming up from the base, so it might do all right. But I understood that planting that was a little bit of a risk doing it in November. As we move along, we have, let's see here, this is a hardy, uh, excuse me, a smooth leaf hydrangea. I'm not sure which one it is because it's not blooming right now, but I can tell from the foliage that that is a smooth leaf hydrangea. So this one, we trimmed back. This one blooms off of the new growth. So trimming it really wasn't a problem. So all the growth is kind of coming back from the base. And this is one that we also have transplanted from this area from last summer. We saved it to plant into here so we'd have something that's a little bit more mature. Along the pavement here, we've got a grouping of five of the, uh, the Lacanthema. These are Daisy May. So we're excited to watch those as those will start to bloom. And behind them there, that's another smooth hydrangea pretty sure that one's incredible so we'll see when it blooms if it is uh, but that one looks pretty mature and I know there was incredible in here so we'll see if it's white it's incredible if it's pink it's probably invincible spirit we also planted a couple butterfly bush this here is the pugster blue again planting this that late in the season was a little bit of a risk because uh, butterfly bush in Michigan they really like to have a good start before we go into winter but I can see that this is starting to come back from the base which is what happens here in our zone five, six garden. So that one will be beautiful by the summer. Uh, but Michigan here in our cooler climate, butterfly bush usually come back from the base, where in the warmer climates, you're probably gonna find that they'll come back off of the old growth from the previous season. We have another smooth hydrangea here. And again, the summer will know which one it is once it starts blooming. There's a little bit of something coming up here I'm not sure what that is, but time will tell. In the back by that post, that is a grouping of Allium, either Millennium or Allium Serendipity. And those you can see got cold. That brown that you're seeing, that's where the, the cold temperature kind of nipped them. But they're still coming up and I see more growth. So that's just a result of cold nights, but it's not gonna affect the flowers or the blooms on that. Next here we have a spirea, and I think the spirea is pretty nice because when you see that foliage, I mean, everything we've looked at so far pretty much is green, but with a spirea, it's got that nice golden yellow foliage so that even though it's not flowering, that foliage is really adding a little splash of color to this garden bed. As we move along, there's more of the millennium or serendipity allium. So we kind of did a little bit of like a drift planting with that. Here is another Bartzilla peony. So we kind of have one on either side, so it kind of balances this out. So that'll be just a massive yellow blooms once that starts going. Like the other one, we had the opening act phlox planted in front of it. And we did that over here too, because we wanted to kind of create a little bit of symmetry in this garden. Although we want to have a lot of different varieties too. So it's like, how can you be symmetrical, but yet feature a lot of different things? So I think the girls, who designed this did a really nice job of creating some symmetry along with a lot of different things in here. Here is another grouping of opening act ultra pink phlox. So we're gonna have a couple different colors. Uh, the thing with the opening act series of phlox that sets them apart from some of the other tall phlox is the opening act blooms earlier in the season. So if you really love the look of tall phlox and wanna extend what the season looks like, opening act would start earlier so if you want to kind of mix those in with your tall phlox you'll have longer uh, blooming with the phlox this here is the at last rose this was saved from the old garden bed so that's going to be a fairly mature plant we didn't want everything to be super young so we definitely saved a few staple things that we really enjoy and replanted them in this area we've got some of the pink dawn salvia 
and this is a spring bloomer there's some buds going on there so this will probably be blooming in about three weeks or so we did kind of a mass planting there next to it are some dianthus and they're just starting to show just a little touch of pink let's go in and take a look and you can see there's a lot of buds going on there this is the paint the town fancy which is a kind of a magenta red colored dianthus I think we have another hydrangea back here. It's trying to come back. We'll see how that does as well. So as we take the corner here, this was never a flower garden before, but we really wanted to line this fence with a flower bed. And so in this area here, we've also taken some of the things where you can see some of the bigger plants from along the side of the parking lot there and brought them across the front. So let's take a walk through here and take a look. I had them use a lot more shrubs and different shrubs in this area because there's certain shrubs that I've really never seen flower like in real life. And I wanted to be able to experience them here at the garden center so I don't have to go off to other trial gardens to see what they're doing. So we have some more of the allium. So we kind of just carried that through. So it's gonna be kind of a theme as you're looking down the flower bed. There is a, another little creeping fox there up in the front. You can see the irises because we really wanted to make for sure that we weren't forgetting about the spring color. So the irises will bring some spring color. And then you can see the little splashes of pink and purple with more of the different creeping phlox. In this area, we planted some berry poppins and Mr. Poppins because I really, I wanted to have some winter color here. And that berry poppins with those red berries, even if the snow's not out, those red berries are gonna look stunning up against this white fence and really create a splash of color for winter interest in this garden bed. There is some Shasta daisies, some more Daisy May. I see some Monarda coming up there along the back. Sorry, it's so windy out. Uh, a pearl glam. So this is one plant I'm really excited to see bloom because I love the purple berries, but I've never really seen this one bloom. So this will be fun to have here so I can see what this looks like when it is in bloom. We have some more of the smooth hydrangeas in the back. And then we tucked in a couple of the heuchera here for just some foliage color. We also put some aronia. This is low scape mound and that's starting to bloom. They're kind of like red. And then as the clusters break open, there's the beautiful white flowers. So that's going to be a little bit of a creepy, creeper shrub. So I'm hoping it plays nice in this garden and doesn't creep to where it shouldn't. Um, but we'll see. You don't know if you don't try. So I wanted to, to give that a try. And you can see over here, we evened it out and planted another one. And great spring color. In the back there is an incredible blush hydrangea. That's part of the smooth hydrangea family as well. And as you notice, I'm mentioning smooth hydrangea, smooth hydrangea. Why is she saying that? Well, in Michigan here, big leaf hydrangeas sometimes struggle a little bit with coming back and being a reliable bloomer year after year. So we find that the smooth hydrangeas, they just, they always bloom because they bloom off the new growth. So when we're tucking hydrangeas in, we'll typically do either the hardy or the smooths because we know we're going to get blooms. There we have a tall flax so we'll see what color that is once it blooms and then we also kind of balanced out over here with some more of the berry poppins more of the shasta daisies irises and then as we take the corner here we put an ornamental grass uh, just to give a little motion to this garden for in the fall and then kind of bordered a little bit with some heucherella so here is a look at this garden from the side so i'll be, be really excited to see how this looks once we get to summer as long as we're out here i'm going to show you projects we're working on so this was our grassy field before we've had it all excavated so it's ready for greenhouses when and if we want to put greenhouses up here so basically this area this summer we're hoping to put some sidewalks in ground mat down and if we want, we'll just use it as an outdoor growing space for garden moms or perennials or something um, until we're ready to put greenhouses up. But for now, at least it's prepped and ready. So when we decide to, we don't have to get the heavy equipment in here again, it's all ready to go. As we take a turn here, you'll see the front. We're on a pretty busy road. 
And this area here, between those two trees, there's a little bit of a, a gully. So that is to, for any water drainage, it can go down and head over to the field where there's a, a creek or a pond or whatever. So the water will drain that way. And then we put up some berms that our intentions are to plant these up with probably some shrubs and then we'll mix in some annuals and perennials as well but this is a pretty big garden space so we want to get some really big plants in there like the shrubs so that they're really eye-catching and don't get lost with all the other things going on behind it so now we're up to the front island of the greenhouse and i'm going to circle back here a minute so we can kind of start at a good starting point and then we'll work our way around so in this area here, this is a pretty mature garden and has been planted now for, I mean, going on 20 years for some of these plants, uh, but we've done a lot of tearing things out and replacing it. So some of these have only been in for about four or five years. On either side of the pergola here, we have the Romnus fine line. That's a beautiful columnar shrub. You can see how that has a great up, upright habit, but doesn't get very wide. That plant is probably five to six foot tall but only two foot wide. So nice columnar structure to put on, you know, entrances of a door, or if you have a garage and you want something tall and skinny in front of the garage, that might be a good option there too. In this area, there's a lot of the smooth hydrangeas as well as the big leaf, or excuse me, smooth hydrangeas and hardy hydrangeas. So in the summer, this is just really a hydrangea heaven. Uh, but we, we have to put other things in here too, right? Because I don't think one can live with only hydrangeas, maybe, uh, but it's always fun to shake it up. So in this area underneath the tree there, it's circled in some hostas, but more closer up here, we have some baptisia. So that baptisia there is about six inches tall, and that will get four foot tall approximately once it starts flowering. Along the front here, we bordered it in some Veronica and Salvia, along with some Shasta daisies. So when the hydrangeas are or are not blooming, there are other things giving color to this area. You can see here, this is a hardy, this one here actually is a hardy hydrangea. This one is firelight. We trimmed it back to about four foot last fall. Gave it a nice rounded habit. And you can see how the leaves are coming back now. And then all the flowers will be at the top with the new growth. This here is a smooth hydrangea, and this one we trimmed back to about three foot. We could have trimmed it back to about 12 inches if we wanted to, but we wanted to make sure that it would be, you know, pretty, pretty large this spring, so we didn't want to take it down too short. And again, by trimming last fall, no risk to the flowers for this spring. More of the hardy and smooth hydrangeas. One thing I want to point out is behind there, that kind of woody looking plants right there that's a pinky winky hydrangea and that thing's over 20 years old so last summer it was going on to 10 12 foot tall and that thing was huge it was gorgeous but i'm like you know what it's time that thing needs to get trimmed back so we trimmed it back to about probably it's probably about six foot now um, so we'll see how it does this year it'll bloom it'll look nice but I just, I wanted to kind of get it more into check with the other plants that were around it and not have it be such a huge plant out in the middle of this garden. As we take the corner here, we're coming across some spirea along with invincible spirit hydrangeas. So let me, so these grouping here are of three different spirea. We trimmed those last fall. And you can see how the foliage is kind of a golden color. I believe this is the double plate gold. And you can see how that foliage kind of stands out against some of the other greens of some of the shrubs behind it. Behind it are Invincible Spirit. So these are really big right now. They were trimmed in the fall, but they're about four foot tall. And these are pretty mature plants. They've been out here for probably at least 10 years. So they're really big and really mature. We did kind of continue the spirea around the pond just to kind of continue with that bright splash of color. And then behind it is a wajila, uh, that is wine and roses. And let's see here, right there. 
It's just starting to leaf out. It's got that dark foliage, so that looks really nice up against the lime green here, the spirea. And then that will get pink flowers on it in the spring. This will all get planted up with annuals as soon as the weather uh, makes sense for us to do it. So we'll have sun patients, petunias, and whatever else we decide to put. Uh, but it's always such a pretty, pretty show of color once we get it planted up. We just installed this rock fountain here at the end of the waterfall. So that will add a little bit of different character. So this was in the garden center for many years, but it no longer kind of fit the look we had going on. Uh, so we decided we put it out here in the landscape and see what's how it does. So we'll see. Up here in this front bed, there is, um, this area needs a little bit of work. I mean, it looks nice, it's easy to walk around, but I feel like we really need to add some more things in for some more color. Up front here, there's a grouping of Nepeta, that is a cat's meow. We have some Salvia, a mass planting, and then also some Euphorbia. So the Euphorbia, this is bonfire. This is starting to bloom. This is its blooming state right now. Beautiful foliage. But then that yellow, that's actually the flower. It looks like it's just part of the plant, um, but that's the flower of the Euphorbia bonfire. We've got some columbine here that are gonna be blooming shortly. This area here was full of big leaf hydrangeas. And we were marking them last year to see which ones would bloom and which ones wouldn't bloom. And as you can see, looking at this space, there is none left. So none of them really gave us the bloom that we wanted. So they all got ripped out. So there's a couple Baptisia that are starting to pop up in this area, along with a couple of the hardy hydrangeas. But pretty much all the big leaf that were along this front area all got ripped out. So we'll see what's going to end up there. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear what you think would look good in this area. I'm sure that we have a few ideas of our own, but I'm always open to suggestions from others. This is a limelight hydrangea, pretty old plant. And if you look at these plants, they're all kind of headed sideways. We're in a very windy area here, which I'm sure maybe this video is picking up, so I apologize. Uh, but these plants, they are taking a lot of wind, and you can see it's kind of affecting the way that they're growing. Uh, next to this limelight hydrangea is a bloomerang lilac, and this got a severe trimming last year. And also it was next to another limelight that you can see when we back up here a little bit, that limelight was really up in that lilac's business and kind of affected the shape of that lilac. So now that they've gotten all trimmed, hopefully they'll all kind of look a little bit better because they have their space again. We have some roses up here as well. I'm not sure how long they're gonna last up here because this is quite an old plant and very thorny, but it is pretty when it blooms. So we'll see. It is a older variety. Let's take a look at what it actually is. Oh, this is Candy O. So Candy O is no longer out there in production, I guess, but it is a pretty flower when it flowers, but this might get replaced with something newer and different. We'll see. Over here we have Forsythia. That's already bloomed. So that is just waiting to foliage up. And then some Wajila. More of the hardy hydrangeas. And then this is the Penicetum grass. This is, oh, which one is this? Redhead. So we got some redhead grass. And then planted behind it is the Itea Little Henry. This was, I think, three plants to start with, and it's definitely spreading, which it's okay for the space that it's in. It's okay that it's doing that. Um, but something maybe to keep in mind when you are planting is certain shrubs do kind of spread a little bit, and this certainly is one of them. All right, let's turn it towards the road. We have a grouping of the Going Bananas Daylilies all along. And then behind them are the, lo and behold, blue chip butterfly bush planted behind. And then what we'll do along the edge there is we'll put 
uh, sun patients. We might even put like some fireworks grass in there. Usually we do three things. So I can't think of what the other thing is right now, but always sun patients and a grass of some sort. Got some more Veronica here. And then a nice little clematis here that's just kind of rogue all on its own growing. But this is really pretty when it blooms. It's a nice purple color. All right. Spin it around. So I think that will be the end of the garden tour for today. We'll do another tour eventually once the berm out past the sign. So out here, once that gets planted, we'll talk about what's going on out there to show you. Right now there's just a birch and a uh, bloomerang dark purple out there so not a lot to show you but eventually we'll have a lot of color out there and be able to show you a whole lot more so hopefully this is just you know the beginning of the season things are just starting to wake up uh, but hopefully you know as the season goes on you stick with me and watch and listen to all the beautiful color that will be here in bloom soon before we know it and once we get all the annuals popped in that will have its own magical look all to itself. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.